During the Cold War, Bell's hydrofoil principles were finally put to use on huge and powerful military hydrofoils. Subchasers, fast attack craft, missile launchers, and coastal defense craft. In Canada, experiments with various foil arrangements were done with two small craft, the RX and the 45-foot Massawippi. The Massawippi used Bell and Baldwin's traditional airplane foil arrangement. The RX was used to test the new canard foil arrangement with a small foil in the front and a larger surface-piercing foil aft that would carry most of the weight of the boat. A 17-ton vessel called the Bedeck tested Bell and Baldwin's foil arrangement to its limits on a large vessel. Like the German experiments, Rough Seas played havoc with his foil arrangement. The most stable hydrofoil platform turned out to be the tricycle-like canard configuration of the RX. The ultimate vessel created from these experiments was a 200-ton vessel named Brador, after the lake where Bell conducted his experiments. The Brador was a triumph of engineering and technology, but changing priorities for the Canadian government in the early 1970s led them to mothball the great craft. It now resides in a naval museum yard just outside Quebec City. I christen thee Pegasus. The American Navy, through contracts with several innovative companies, developed hydrofoils for use where speed was of the essence. The most highly developed U.S. military hydrofoils were equipped with retractable foils that allowed them to lessen their draft considerably if they were required to enter shallow water during military action. At 212 feet long, USS Plainview was the largest hydrofoil in the world. Built by Lockheed, she needed two gas turbine engines of 14,000 horsepower each to lift her hulking 320-ton hull from the water. Boeing, the world's largest aircraft manufacturer, used its aeronautical expertise and another new technology, water jet propulsion, to transform an already potent design into a high-speed attack dog. One of the largest water jet-powered ships ever built, USS Tucumcari is the forerunner of the modern jet ski. Along with her sister ship Flagstaff, Tucum Carey saw active service in a variety of missions, including river patrol in Vietnam. From the early days, U.S. military hydrofoils were equipped with Harpoon missiles, the Navy's basic anti-ship missile. Harpoon missiles have a range of over 60 miles and travel at over 500 miles per hour. And, most importantly, can be fired accurately from a ship traveling in excess of 40 knots. The mainstays of the U.S. hydrofoil fleet were the six PHMs built by Boeing. The 131-foot, 240-ton PHMs carried eight anti-ship missiles and a 75-millimeter rapid-fire gun. With their three water jets propelling them at over 46 miles per hour, they could be an awesome sight during wartime maneuvers. The PHMs were pushed for deployment in the Mediterranean and the Caribbean. Although they had played a part in the U.S. deployment in Grenada, they had not yet proven to the satisfaction of the naval chiefs how they could tangibly contribute to combat environments given their limited range, their expense, and the safety concerns involved. Today, with America's new war on terrorism, some military experts concerned with homeland security are again looking to hydrofoils as an effective means to protect America's harbors and coastal waterways. In Russia, a great network of long, straight lakes and waterways creates a perfect liquid superhighway for high-speed hydrofoils. A hydrofoil building tradition developed after the Second World War based partly on hydrofoil knowledge acquired from German scientists. Russia produces more hydrofoils than any other country. They operate mainly as passenger ferries on inland waterways. Today, it is estimated that 80% of the world's passenger hydrofoils are Russian-built. Even in the heart of North America's Great Lakes, Seaflight Hydrofoils of Toronto uses Russian-built Volga Catran hydrofoils to ferry tourists to and from Niagara Falls. Once the turbo engines kick in, the ship quickly jumps up on its foils. It looks dramatic, but inside the feeling is imperceptible. The ride just smooths out, giving the feeling of actually slowing down. But as the hydrofoils fly through the water about six feet below the surface, Passengers enjoy an airplane smooth ride at 34 knots, 
while these craft travel above the pounding waves in seas as high as six feet. Russian hydrofoil ferries have proved to be inexpensive and dependable, and they can be found in every corner of the world, from the Netherlands to South America. By using hydrofoils, Monitor reached speeds of 38 knots, inconceivable for a conventional sailboat under similar conditions. But at a price of $20,000 in 1957, commercial sales were not possible. The SCAT represents a huge step towards the future of ocean sailboat racing. In France, Alain Thibault has had the same dream. Here, the future has come to life in a 60-foot, open-class ocean racer called Hydroptère. It is the culmination of over 25 years of French aerospace and shipbuilding experience. Hydroptère weighs 4.8 metric tons and can reach speeds up to 45 knots. The total estimated cost of building her is over six and one half million dollars. Ocean sailboat racing will never be the same. If it travels on water, hydrofoils make it faster and more fun. The Sky Ski Company was founded in 1998 by Mike Murphy, co-inventor of the world's first sit-down hydrofoil water ski. Hydrofoil water skis are growing in popularity around the world because the low drag means the skiers can ride longer with less fatigue. But the most spectacular thing about hydrofoil water skis is the air. Sky skis claim the record for the biggest air behind a boat at over 23 feet without a ramp. Performing over 100 different maneuvers, hydrofoil water skiing competitions are the extreme water sport of the future. Aircraft aluminum is carved to create finely tuned foils. It's art, science, and a passion for extremes that combine to create what the converts are calling the greatest water sport ever. Sky skis are now used at SeaWorld and every major professional water ski show in the world. It's the sensation of flight that makes hydrofoils so exciting. The quiet smoothness of a boat that has finally escaped the constant pounding of waves. Going faster, jumping higher, big air, and big fun. With each advance in strong, lightweight materials, there is an advance in hydrofoiling. Nearly 100 years after Alexander Graham Bell drew his first hydrofoil designs, hydrofoiling is a high-flying adventure sport that has really just taken off.